That's Vox Sanbu, and we are joined by the hip-hop artist for in Montreal. Uh, his website is voxsambu.com. And joining us as well from Ottawa is Jean Saint-Ville. Uh, he is a Haitian writer and activist. His website is godisnotwhite.com. Um, let's begin with Vox Sambu. You're just back from Haiti. Describe what's happening there and outside of Port-au-Prince as well, where you come from. Good morning. Uh, when I first arrived in Haiti, I was so shocked. First of all, at the airport, it was like completely chaotic. I spent like several of hours just before receiving my bag and uh, took a little plane, go to Cap Haitien. And the uh, first thing I saw, it was extremely, extremely crowded. You can tell there's a lot more people in the city. It takes me like an hour and 15 minutes just to go to my hometown, Lembe, which is like 27 kilometers. The roads are extremely bad. And once I arrive in Lembe, you see so many uh, young kids on the street like begging for money begging for food and older also and it, they they become a bit more a very frustrated um, they when they pass in front of the house asking for food asking my mom when my mom decides to say okay we don't have right now people they get a bit more aggressive because there's no uh, the government haven't reached the people at all there's a sense of frustration just a few weeks just before I arrived in in Haiti the people of Rembe they have have burned uh, the only tribunal that is there and then the government office. And uh, they were very frustrated because there's no information. They've been waiting for forever. Uh, like, imagine in, in Port Prince uh, where the, all the help uh, being there and people are still frustrated. Can you imagine, like, in the north side of Haiti right now and Cap Haitien, everybody's worrying about the next earthquake. That the sense of the people I speak with, they feel that the earthquake going to hit. Uh, Capaïcien, they don't feel prepared. There's no measure of prevent, prevention. If you're looking at uh, Barrier Bouteille and the entrance of uh, Capaïcien, you're looking at Nabanan and the mountain, you see all the house there, they're super crowded, and you feel like if you just punch it with your hand, it's going to fall. So there's, there's a lot of, a lot of frustration on the ground. And uh, Jean Saint-Ville, uh, the issue of funding right now, it's been seven months since the earthquake. A recent review found that only 2 percent of the pledged uh, money has actually been delivered. Um, and now this is coming with this call by uh, a group of academics and, uh, and thinkers calling on France to repay the, what they're calling the independence debt uh, that was imposed nearly 200 years ago. Can you give us a history lesson of what happened uh, once Haiti won independence from France? Yes. Uh, of course, Haiti was fighting against racial slavery uh, from the time that the Africans landed in 1499. And when the independence was won, uh, France was uh, uh, obliged to accept the reality. And it's that, in that same year, in 1803, that France actually sold Louisiana to the United States uh, for 15 million uh, U.S. dollars, uh, realizing that Napoleon would not be able to build its empire in the Americas. So. Uh, that condition, the condition of the wars that were taking place in Europe at the time, uh, made it uh, difficult for France to uh, continue that war. But in 1825, the war between Britain and, and, and France ended, and so they ganged up on Haiti, and the French government uh, arrived with 15 warships uh, and demanded that the Haitians. Um, pay them reparations for the loss of property. That is my great-grandparents. Uh, uh, and um, so, and they estimated that it was 150 million francs, which was at the time the annual budget of France. And Haiti paid that, re uh, that ransom uh, up to 1947. And in order to do that, they had to close public schools cut most of our forest in order to generate revenue to send that money to France. So for the longest time, one out of eight French uh, person lived off this money that Haiti was providing to the French budget directly. So, so uh, it's not surprising 
that there is no infrastructure that was ever built on the western side of the island. You don't find one tunnel in the whole western side of the island of Haiti. And on top of that— Jean Sainville, I wanted to interrupt for one yes, minute just sorry. to play the call for reparations from France uh, that um, came one month after a group of Montreal-based activists pulled off a hoax declaring that France had decided to pay up. In a video falsely attributed to the French foreign ministry, an actor posing as a French government spokesperson said Haiti would be giving back the billions of dollars that France took. France is repaying the historic debt of 90 million gold francs Haiti paid to France following the former's independence at the dawn of the 19th century. For too long, Haiti has been saddled with the burden of foreign debt, debt that has just added to natural catastrophes to block this country's development over the past decades. The disaster that has befallen the Haitian people is clearly not merely the result of January's earthquake. It is in part the result of long-term economic and social policies. So there you have it, the video that went out um, that declared that France had decided to pay up, falsely attributed to the French foreign ministry. Um, Jean Sainville, take it from there, the significance of uh, this, um, this well, really a kind of parody um, and a kind of yes-men-like approach to dealing with this issue that is a mass crisis right now, the lack of money that Haiti has. Yes. And, you know, I, I have to take my hats off to uh, this organization uh, for putting this out, because the restitution demand is old. Uh, the Haitian uh, uh, emperor, uh, Souluk, in 1853, decided that he's not going to pay. And then they sent another set of gun, uh, boats with guns to destroy the National Palace. Uh, 1877, Haitians again stood up and said no. And in the more recent period, in 1999, when President Preval was going to the Francophonie ceremony in Moncton, Canada, uh, we challenged him to raise that issue with the French uh, president of, at the time, Jacques Chirac. Uh, president Preval got scared and did not raise the issue. And as you know, in 2003, uh, President Aristide, on April 7th, uh, the anniversary of the death of uh, Toussaint Louverture, uh, in the presence of Danny Glover and other uh, people who were there, they raised the restitution demand. And as you all know, less than uh, 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 a couple of years, uh, one year later, uh, the French uh, ganged up with the Americans and the Canadians, and they kidnapped the president and dumped him in, in, in uh, Central African Republic. And so this demand that just came out is proving that the restitution demand is not something that belongs to uh, a set of, of Haitians. Uh, it's generation after generation that Haitians and people of conscience are going to rise up to demand that the billions that are required to build the infrastructure of Haiti be restored to that uh, nation. And it's just a matter of justice. In 2004, when we published the restitution petition with the Haitian Lawyers Leadership Network, what, that's what we did. We, we made an open call to the people of France, because my personal experience has been that most people who are from France, such as people where I work, did not know that history. And when they find out, they also join that restitution demand. So in 2005, we uh, presented the restitution uh, document to the uh, French embassy right here in Ottawa. And Jean Sainville, I wanted to ask you about the legislative and presidential elections that are coming up this year. Uh, the uh, Provisional Electro uh, Election Council has uh, reiterated its 2009 decision to ban the Lavalas party, the party of the ousted uh, president, jean Bertrand Aristide. You were in South Africa recently, where you met with him. Talk about this ban of the Lavalas party and what Aristide is saying right now. Well, uh, first of all, this is a proof that the UN mission that is in Haiti today is not there to protect the Haitian people any more than the UN was in the Congo in the 60s to protect the people of the Congo, but rather to cover up a, a, a coup that took place and uh, to impose puppet regimes in Haiti. If you're having elections, 
Uh, you cannot have political exiles. You cannot have the most popular party in Haiti by everybody's account, including uh, uh, officials of government with whom uh, we talk in private, but who will never admit it in public, that Formula Lavalas is the most popular party in Haiti. And as you know, since 2004, they've banned Lavalas from participating in every election. They have arrested leaders such as uh, Father Jean Just, who was in jail when the election was taking place in 2006, uh, Soane, and many other people. And of course, uh, the very fact that uh, uh, President Jean-Bertrand Aristide and his family have to stay uh, in South Africa during this uh, uh, period of need of Haiti uh, tells you that what is being reinforced in Haiti is not democracy, but rather the rule by minority, so that the interests of the rich Haitians uh, uh, can be protected, Jean like you Sanville, saw. We need reports. to get to Vox to talk about Wyclef Jean, who's going to be running for president. Mm -hmm. But I did want to ask you what, why President Aristide is not returning to Haiti. What's stopping him? He's not returning to Haiti for the same reason for that, for the longest time, Nelson Mandela was considered a terrorist, even by the British. Uh, Jean-Bertrand Aristide is too popular uh, for the United States, Canada, and France uh, to uh, uh, order President Preval uh, to issue President Aristide his passport so he can travel to be back uh, with his people. And when we met him in South Africa, we saw that uh, um, he and his family uh, are deprived of the ability to share their experience, especially an experience in South Africa that could be very useful to Haiti, because we have the same dynamic of a minority, uh, a very rich uh, minority that doesn't understand the need to uh, become more intelligent and share the resources with the majority of the population. Uh, Vak Sambu, what about uh, the well-known uh, artist, singer, performer, Wycliffe Jean, announcing he will be running for president of Haiti. I think anybody has a right to apply to a president of Haiti, but um, legally, if he can. But the thing is, I think it's very unfortunate uh, people are talking about the celebrity of only one person. And while right now, what we need is uh, health care. If you go on the ground in my hometown, Lembe, you see what the people, they completely, um, they don't know what to do anymore because they haven't seen anything. And right now, the media only talk about the celebrity of one person. I think I think uh, we have to go on the ground and see exactly what the people of Haiti in the north, they really demanding, because uh, this is not a game. This is the most, most important um, thing happening in my country right now, and the media only focus on one person. I think w this is really not fair. Me growing up um, in Haiti, when the first coup d'etat happened in 1991, it wasn't a joke. We, we couldn't do anything. We have to stay inside our, our, our house. People were getting beaten up. And right now, we have the most important thing going on, and w the things are not properly investigated. We're just going on the surface. We need a people to go down there and talk to people, especially in the, in the rural area. People are not being informed. There's no electricity. Uh, you can't tell me uh, a country like Canada or the U.S. who have so much power, and there's no electricity, no electricity in the north. The people, they don't know what's going on. People uh, at a school, for example, the public school of Lycée Jean-Baptiste Néas du Lembe, which has like 2,000 students, they don't have a nursing home. We raise money, Solidarity here from Montreal, we raise money to send them one laptop that's serving the whole